Hi, it's a gorgeous day here in South Florida and I'm in the East Fort Lauderdale neighborhood where Warsaw Coffee Company is right behind me as well as Milk Money, which is a bar and kitchen. This is a local hotspot for those who live in East Fort Lauderdale and today I'm going to be interviewing Gary James, the award-winning photographer, as well as a local himself. Let's go inside and dig deep on our conversation and why we both love South Florida so much. Come on inside. Hi, I'm Megan Probst and I'm here at Warsaw Coffee Company. It's in East Fort Lauderdale. It's our local brewery shop. And I'm here with award-winning photographer Gary James, who's been spending a decade starting conversations in hope of creating magic. Gary, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, Megan. I'm happy I caught you and you weren't traveling and on a shoot, <laughs> so it's a, it's a busy Saturday today. Well, I'm definitely trying to get out of the country soon, so I'm glad that I'm here too. So, Gary, I'm just going to get right into it. Tell us how you started your photography career. Was it formal training or...? You know, it's interesting. I, I never planned on being a photographer. I, I grew up in a, a family that was all in finance and I just thought that would be the natural path of my life, that I would go to college and get into the financial industry and stay there. But I got in and it just wasn't right for me. It didn't, it didn't suit my soul. And so you were studying finance? Yeah, I studied fi finance through college. I did um, a bachelor's in marketing and finance and went right into to banking as soon as I left. Um, and it just wasn't feeding my soul, so I decided to, to try something new. And it still wasn't photography. I, I think, you know, the first camera that I had, I think my brother Mark bought for me. And it was just one of these little um, digital cameras. I remember it, a little blue digital camera. Probably was there doesn't. An occasion for that, or? Probably my birthday. Okay, interesting. But, I, you know, it probably didn't even work as well as the cameras we have on our phones today. Right. But um, I, I had some good times with that. I was able to do some, some incredible pictures with them. And still then, I didn't think that I was going to be a photographer. What really happened that, that changed my trajectory was when I went to Full Sail, which is a college up in uh, Orlando. I went there and I did an elective on film. And I, I saw the way, we were doing a project, and I saw the way light could affect everything, how you could change a hero into a villain, not by doing anything different with their expression, but just by changing the way you put light on them. And I was hooked from there. I was like, wow. I want to be able to create like that. So thank you, Full Sail. <laughs> thank you, Full Sail. Yeah, I love it. So I will never forget the first sale that I had. So tell us about your first shoot that you have. <laughs> I, I wish I could forget my first shoot. <laughs> um, my, my first shoot was, I mean, back then I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. But, you know, now I look back at it, I'm like, okay, I should have been a little bit more modest. But, you know, it was a great learning experience at the end of the day. Um, it was for a nightclub called Eden, and we decided to do an Adam and Eve shoot. So we got two models and a huge snake, which everyone was afraid of. A real but snake. A real okay. snake. And we, no one was liking this part, but we, we decided to push forward. I think I got some little lights from Home Depot and that I just attached to those a flash, curtain. Those flashlights. No, yeah, just a little, those little metal lights you can like hang on a wall. Yeah. Um, they were so hot, everyone was sweating. I taped a curtain, a black curtain onto the back wall over a window. And then I just shot. And you know what? Everyone loved the pictures. And even though I look back at those times and I think, oh my gosh, that was terrible. It's really good that I started that way. I started with nothing. I, I started with the minimal equipment and I had to find ways to do things that, you know, you know, from the yeah. shooting from my hip. Right. And um, it, it really helps me when I go into situations now, especially like if I'm doing travel photography, where all I have is my camera. And I have to find ways to make 
it incredible. So I'll right. I'll pick up a flashlight or I'll use a street light or you know window right. and I'll just find a way to make it happen. So that leads me into one, what are you shooting with now? Or you must have that one camera that you're never letting go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's uh it's just very special to you or it's still shooting the way you uh, love to shoot. I started with Sony and I've stuck with I still have a Sony camera. I have a Nikon that I use for my underwater shooting, but my camera is Canon. My, it's a 1DX and it just renders brilliantly. And my, the lens that I love is an 85 millimeter. And I think the, the thing about Canon is there's something that is really rich and alive about the pictures. There's something that's very real when you use a camera to shoot. And, and if anything, I would say that's what defines my work, is trying to capture moments that bring my audience into those moments. So you had talked about how you started, and I think a lot of young uh, photographers, they may not have a mentor, so how would you give them advice in starting? I mean, a really great tip where you just use what yeah. you have, but what's some tips you would offer? That is the first one that I would go for is, is use what you have, uh, especially nowadays with Instagram and the way that people can put work out there and just be judged on how the moments they're capturing and how good their work is, not who they're connected to or, or what they know. All they have to do is start putting their work out there, putting them themselves out there and never be afraid to learn from other people. I, I, I find as artists that sometimes we, we really shy away from you know getting advice because right. we, we, we defend our art fiercely. Right. We want we it's like this is my creation, I want to do it on my own, but when you when you find the right people they can they can change everything about your work. That's a, I think that's a really great point, you know, re really finding a mentor too. Um, so, I know as you progress in your in your field, you have those milestones or those notable shoots that, or, or those, that notable photo that you, is your favorite, or maybe yeah. favorite. Can you tell us a little bit about favorite shoot, uh. favorite photo? <laughs> well, you know, I love I love the big productions. I love working with an incredible team, having art directors and makeup and style and a group of really talented people that you can feed off of to create something wonderful. But the pictures that I, I really remember, the ones that like have captured my heart, have been the ones that I never expected. The ones I didn't see coming. I was, I remember this photo that I took. I was in Miami, in Little Haiti, just walking with a photographer friend of mine. We had our cameras on, on us just in case. Uh, nothing really interesting was coming up. We are taking some shots here and there. But I turned a corner and there were these vendors on the side of the street selling fruits and all that. And there were a lot of them, but one lady just stood out. She was so beautiful, just like an angel sitting uh, uh, amongst people. Um, she was this older woman, and as I approached her to ask her, you know, if I could take her picture, I looked at her and I noticed that I could see myself in her eyes. And and. And I was like, you know, I just, I need to capture this. I need to capture this moment. And I took just a few shots and I wasn't even sure if I got it after that, but didn't want to take up too much of her time. I promised her I would come back and I would give her the pictures. And then, you know, I, I came back, actually I went back several times, never saw her again. So I'm, I'm still thinking she may have just been an angel. Um, but I never saw her again, but it's still uh, a picture that, that stands out to me more than anything. And, and you know, it, it's funny that we went down that path, it's because even with the big productions, the moments that stand out are the ones that aren't directed. I like to say the, the, the moments between all the direction, right. when people aren't paying attention. Right. Sometimes when 
when I get to a point where, you know, we, there's like an impasse. You have a shot that you know is going to work, but you can't quite get to direct the person. You can't connect with your subject the way you want to. And sometimes I'll just step back and I'll, I'll let them forget that I was even taking their picture and I'll see how they start interacting naturally and you know I'll hide behind a, a, a little spot and I'll just start taking their pictures and you know if you're with the right crew they'll start catching on and they'll, they'll change your life, they'll start working with you and you know magic is happening when everyone just is silent you know, sets can be very loud, hectic places. And when no one is speaking, when everything just goes absolutely silent, you know that there's some magic happening. Wow, that's beautiful. Thanks. I mean, you have a very calming presence. So that, I mean, that, that leads into how you really calm your subjects or, you know, as you say, convincing subjects to find comfort in the uncomfortable. That was a line yeah. I saw on your website. I yeah. just love that. So how, what's your tactic? <laughs> Every subject is different. And I, I think you really have to approach people for who they are. And you just have to let them know that whatever they want to express, go for it. And I'm going to capture it in a very authentic way. But I think a lot of it comes down to stepping back and taking your yourself out of it, your ego out of it, and and letting that person be. And it's not even always comfort. Sometimes it's a push, uh, and, and sometimes it's even keeping them nervous because sometimes that's their energy. But you have to work with it and be ready. Be ready when they're showing you something real, and always, always be watching. And then when they show you something real, say, you know, you know, I saw you do something, yeah. and this is you. Let's do that, and then and we'll and we'll be able to capture it. That way. It's personal discovery in a sense. Oh, it's I think what what I love about the whole experience of shooting is getting to know people in this non-verbal way that can often be so much deeper than even talking to them. Even though you're doing a wonderful job with the talking. <laughs> so, Mary, when you're getting ready for a shoot, you know, I have my prep or I'm going yes. into a listing presentation. Okay. Tell me what your rituals or, you know, how you prepare. Is there something that you do every single time or... Do, do I rub my lucky rabbit's foot, stuff like that, to make sure it's going well? Um, nothing so, so superstitious, but I, I do have a few shirts that I'm like, okay, this is my lucky shirt. Oh yeah. That I'm gonna Are you wearing take it today? This is no. This oh, is no? this is just my my lucky Still shirts should not be on uh, in front of a camera. They are tattered and torn and very old. So um, <laughs> so. But in preparation, you know, pre preparation is my, is the biggest part of my shoot. It's more important than anything I do on set. I would say there are really two different kinds of uh, shoots that I, I, I prepare for. One would be a travel shoot, and then the other would be uh, a commercial shoot. And the way I prepare for them are so different. For, for commercial shoots, it's knowing what lights you're going to use. It's it's knowing what poses you're going to need, the sets you're going to have to create. It's working with your art director. It's working with your um, stylist and your makeup artist and your entire crew to know how you're going to put forward the image of this company or of this person. Uh, but then when it comes to to travel shoots, which I, I love preparing for travel shoots because it, it, it's it's a mixture of planning and being open. Right. You you plan by you, you look through maps and you find the different roads and you look at where places other people have shot and then you also look at places that other people haven't shot, places that you think have been ignored. Um, for right. and, and you go and try to discover them. Okay. And, and the other thing you do actually with, with all my shoots is I will always look at other people's work but 
it's not to discover just what I like, it's also to discover what I don't like and to, to avoid that. So, uh, in a similar way I do that with, with my travel shoots. Then you get your cameras, your lenses together, you call all the Batteries, people. Right? Make sure you always have batteries on you, which I have forgotten, but as I said, I can shoot with anything. So if, if I if I am in a situation, I will make I will make things work. Um, and then you go out there and you you do what's expected, but then you go off the beaten path and you find something that you didn't even expect to find and that's a that's a thrill of it. Well, I was actually on American Airlines the other day, <laughs> and you know, flipping through the magazine like I always do, and I stumbled upon uh, your feature of Saint Lucia Cowboys. Which <laughs> I did see Saint Lucia, and I love Saint Lucia, but that was very interesting. So, is this like a new niche? Gary James is going to be <laughs> traveling the globe. Is this the new that that is definitely the plan. I've done quite a few travel sh shoots now. I've I've been to several cities in Mexico, a few cities in Colombia, Honduras. I'm going to Turks and Caicos and um, and Dominican Republic soon. So I've been having a great time with the the travel photography. And so so yes, you can expect to see me really much up. more in it. The oh, I did. I mean, and Saint Lucia was just. I mean, a blast seeing seeing Caribbean people and you know with their cowboy hats, and and I took a shot down there that um, I'll, I'll see if I can provide it to you. But you know, I, I was there was this cowboy. His name was Cowboy Celia, I think. And we, you know, we were trying to find a place to take a shot, and we just drove up on this street that looked empty at the time. And as soon as we stepped out of, of the car, we heard a bell ring, and it was apparently school was over. Right. And all these school children just ran out of the school, and so all of a sudden, this empty road that we had to ourselves was now packed with kids. Oh, wow. But they were thrilled. They were like, oh my gosh, you know. You, I don't know if they knew exactly who he was, but they knew, he, they saw him with the guitar and the cowboy hat and they were like, this is awesome. And they surrounded him and, um, and, and, and once again, I just stepped back, I moved away from the situation, let it happen and, and took pictures and it was brilliant. You couldn't have planned for that moment, that's for sure. Yeah, and so it's a mixture of, of planning and then just being ready and being, being ready to be inspired. So, speaking about the Caribbean, we can't hide the accent here. <laughs> So tell us, where are you from? I am from Jamaica and proud to be from there. Um, and I, I think I, I think being from Jamaica and having the family that I have and, and growing up in, in the loving environment that I grew up in, I, I think has always influenced my work. And, and influenced, what do you think the aspect, I'm from Jamaica as well too, so the dance and the music <laughs> and the food. Uh, you go back often, and uh, well, the the influence that I feel I, I get from my Caribbean heritage is 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 a, is a authenticity. It, it's a, it's just such a, a real place to be, and very real, natural people. So you know, and even 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 my family and and the way I, where I grew up, I, I think that that brings you to a, to a place where you just. You can see emotion. You can see truth in people, and so capturing it, you know, is that much easier when you can see it. So we're here in Fort Lauderdale. This is uh, my local coffee shop, as yours is. We both live around the block. So can you uh, tell me what other places? Where can we find you on a Saturday when you're not shooting? You know, um, what are your favorite spots? I, I love making it down to the beach. I love getting on my bike and riding down to Fort Lauderdale Beach. I actually was at a yoga class, not that I'm very good at yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not professing to be good at yoga this. Yoga on the beach? Yoga on the beach. And uh, I'm, I'm very, yeah, I, they, they worked me out um, today, uh, but it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and anything that gets me outside and into nature is, is something I'm going to appreciate. 
you've been living in South Florida for some time now, and you recently purchased. So that that indicates, to me at least, that you love you love living here. This oh, is home. yeah, this is home. And what have you seen, like goodness, living here with the changes and the city? Tell me a little oh, bit about I love the way Fort Lauderdale is growing. I, I love the appreciation of the arts. I I love the boat shows that are coming out here. I love all the neat little restaurants and and cafes that are popping up um, everywhere. There there was uh, at this studio that we used to own. We used to have an art walk uh, that showcased all kinds of different artists from from visual artists to dancers and performers, and it's still going on now in Fat Village, so definitely check that out. I, I think art is alive and well in Fort Lauderdale, and I love it. That's wonderful, and, and Gary, I think it's so important, us as locals that are living here, you know, giving back to the community as, as much as we can. I know that the Big Brothers, Big Sisters uh, program is really important to you. And can you tell, because I think it's a great organization, yeah. and you've had your little brother for how long now? <laughs> I've had I've, I've I've had Kaz for um, three years now I believe it is, and um, he's a great guy. Uh, he's he's just like just a wonderful kid. I and you know what they you hear this adage all the time that you learn more from children than you can teach them, and until you meet meet a kid like Kaz, you, you don't know. But it, it's so true. Um, he loves to build and. And I'm not the handiest of people. <laughs> I and he's. We've been building, you know, little mechanisms. I, they don't always work, but the process of putting them together is always a blast. And he's definitely been teaching me and teasing me about how clumsy I am. Uh, if, if you ever thought of volunteering for something like Big Brothers, Big Sisters, it's such an enriching experience. Definitely go and try it. And don't feel that you have to be perfect because, believe me, these kids will whip you into shape pretty quick. You, you can come any way you want and your life is going to be enhanced probably more than you'll ever be able to enhance. That's amazing. That's amazing. And um, I know I don't want to hold you up much longer, but can you just tell us? I, I want to know what projects you're working on now. Are you um, well, yeah, I, you know, there's some really cool things coming up uh, this this month. I am actually going to London uh, to to shoot for an uh, activewear company over there. That's going to be a brilliant shoot. We're going to be over there for about a week shooting, maybe a, a little bit longer, but we'll we'll see how it all turns out. Uh, I love the people that I'm working with up there. And uh, I'm very excited about that. A little later in the month, I'm heading over to the Dominican Republic. So I've been, I've been practicing my Spanish. So I should be ready. You know, I, I should be ready for for when I uh, get over there. Uh, and I, I love these kinds of shoots because it's the type of shoot where they just drop you in the middle of a country and they say, okay, make something happen. They don't give you much guidelines. They give you enough. That, so that you you're, you stay enough on track that you get the story they need, but they they let you have your freedom because no one's there. Right. It's just you, right. your camera, and your feet, and you, you you walk through the city and you find you discover you you do kind of what you should be doing on a vacation is you discover the real city and then you tell the story of it. Well, I follow you on Instagram. I also see your work in different restaurants, <laughs> hotels, you name it, from Palm Beach to Miami. So Thank how, you. how do we follow you? What's your, your handle on Instagram? Uh, I am Gary, D-R-J, that's like Gary, Dr. J, dot photo. And you'll find me and just give me a follow. I would, I would love that. And you should be following her too, okay? Uh, Megan, Megan, Probes. Megan underscore Probes compass, underscore yeah. compass. There you go. Because your stuff is always you're showing. I love what you're doing for Fort Lauderdale by telling our stories, so that we're not just you know the little man, but we're our own city. So 
when you're out shooting, cause it's, it's a difficult career you're in, uh, you know, it's sales in some sense, but creative aspects, so what keeps you motivated and what are some influences in your life? You, you know, definitely what keeps me motivated is, is my team. Uh, I have, over the years, and you even asked me what I would advise to, to new photographers coming up, start building relationships with good people. Uh, work, work for another photographer, be mentored by a photographer, because what you can learn from other people, not just what to do, but also what not to do, uh, it is, is, is more than you can imagine. Uh, but definitely, what keeps me motivated on set is my team. I work with amazing stylists and makeup artists. I have an incredible art director, Kim Grijalvo, uh, that I, I, I work, work with. It, it's brilliant. I think it, it was a sea change for me to start working with her. And, you know, other people like Casey and Lucas. Those, the, having, having people that you know have your back Right. And that you respect enough to influence your work, which is, which is a hard thing for artists to say. Right. You know that this person makes my work different because we're you know we're fierce right. defenders of our own um, inspiration. Uh, but when you find those people, hold on to them and nurture those relationships. Well, on that note, are there you know because you're you're trying to build your creative side, you're focused on creating. So are there any tools that you would recommend the new photographers implement or, you know? Um, in terms of tools, I, I think I could name a whole bunch of stuff, but I would I would streamline it to get a get a good lighting program like Lightroom or Capture One. I love Capture One personally, and get a great camera, a selection of really good lenses, and then a portable light. And if you have those things, you're you're good to go. Keep keep it simple. Don't don't purchase too many things. Do your research. Spend a little bit more and get a little bit less, but get quality equipment when you can. That's a good that's good advice. Yeah. And I always like to ask because I'm a big big advocate of technology, but not replacing humans, but technology being a tool for us in whatever industry we're in. So, do you find tools that are out there and you know the smartphone apps uh, is that going to be at risk to your craft or you know do you I, just take it for what it is I, as technology um improves i just like to find a way to bring it in to the fold and, and use it how i can uh to to create new things and the wonderful thing about this new technology and the way that people are sharing photography now is that there's inspiration to be found everywhere. Uh, you know, a lot of photographers I think are threatened by things like Instagram, and I'm inspired by things like Instagram. I I go on there and see what people are doing with their camera phones and, and things like that, and I, I love it. And the great thing about social media is that it it is about people documenting their real lives. Right. And if I'm a photographer who is trying to capture authentic moments, I want to see what, what's authentic to people, what's really happening in their day to day. And so I can go on there and I, I can learn more than I could in, in, in years of, of going through other sites. So Gary, I was scrolling on your website and looking through your portfolio. I saw some really cool a picture of a woman submerged in water with light. So are there some new techniques or different styles that you're... Are you sure that wasn't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, that, well, yeah, I mean, the underwater enclosures, I also have, you know, as I said, I work with the Nikon underwater. Uh, a lot but you know you just it's important to keep your mind open and create on the spot use what you have to create what you need to do I remember I was gonna shoot in a pool but you know it I wanted to shoot in a black pool 
so that I could get, yeah, so that I, the water around them would be dark. But it's not very easy to ha find that. So what did I do? I just took a huge uh, black sheet, um, you know, a, a backdrop that we had, we submerged it underwater, and we just lit it from behind, and it looks like the person was just floating in the, the middle of, you know, a dark ocean. So you use, that's, that's what creativity is. It's not just about seeing what you're presented with, but seeing what you can create. And, you know, we, photography and videography is one of the most important tools I use in my career. It's showcasing the lifestyle and the space that we're, you know, selling. So, or that someone is buying. So how, I, I, I saw the term storyteller used from you. So explain a little bit more of why you call your, refer yourself as a storyteller. Um, good question, by the way. I, I like that a lot. Um, I like the, the idea that my, my work isn't just single. I like the idea that it flows into to, to other aspects of... I like shooting stories. If, if you see my work, you see that just one picture doesn't always express the full, the full context, especially when I'm doing travel work. You want to be able to to say this picture relates here this way, and not only that, but to a broader story of the life of the country or the place that you're visiting or the restaurant. You don't just want to show a beautiful picture. You want to say something with your work. And um, lastly, video is so important now. Um, you know, like the attention span, people are not really reading much, and you're able, you're able to grab the attention of people through video. Are we going to expect some video from your end, or? It, yeah. You certainly should. Um, we have definitely been beefing up that, that side of our production. Uh, nothing to show right now, but uh, we've been working on it, and you're going to be seeing something really soon. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we'll be continuing these series, but we're here again with Mary James, photographer, and I, I think we could say local advocate for Fort Lauderdale, and I hope you all have a great day.